Today I'm going to show you how to make this map replete with global ocean gradients, a smooth minimalist overview, and some papery postery texture and weird coastal effects. You ready? Well, let's start with the data. Here we are at Natural Earth, so naturalearthdata.com. I'm going to get the data. And I'm on the hunt for a land polygon, but first an oceans polygon. And these are physical features, and I'm going to go for the highest level of detail available out of these three convenient segments of detail. So I'll choose physical. And here is ocean. I'm going to download the ocean. It's a shapefile format. If I open up this zip file, I'll just drop it in my projects data folder. Here I am in ArcGIS Pro. I'll find my data and add this in Ocean. That's it. And it's all one single polygon. This is actually very important to the look of our map. I'll show you why later. But first, let's prove that it's one polygon. Open the attribute table. There it is, one polygon, Ocean. Let's zoom into our area of interest. Really nice um, level of beautifully crafted detail here. This is our area of interest for the map that we'll be making in this demonstration. Indonesia, beautiful islands of Indonesia. I've never been, but I'd like to see them certainly. First, let's pull in some imagery. I'm gonna choose as my base map, the simple imagery base map. You've all used this one before. It's incredibly handy and it's beautiful. Coordinated by my friend Robert Waterman, member of the Living Atlas team here at Esri. Now, this is a geographically beautiful and interesting and often rugged area of the world, how can we boost that sense of ruggedness? I'm going to add a layer and I'll choose this Living Atlas tab over here in the portal group. And I'm gonna search for hill shade. So there's a tile layer called World Hill Shade. But there's also a version of it called World Hill Shade Dark. So instead of light tones, it just uses darker tones. Very cool. I wanna use the texture of this hill shade and inform it with the colors of my imagery. I don't necessarily want all the detail in the real life texture of the surface of the earth. I want a more representative perspective. So what I'm going to do is use a blend mode to pull in the colors of the imagery to the texture of the hill shade. I'm gonna use luminosity. Now we have uh, an illustrative coloring of this hill shade. This hill shade, by the way, is also organized and coordinated by a colleague on the Living Atlas team named Rajinder Nagi, amazing person. It's a little bit too cartoonish looking for me right now, so I'm just gonna dial back the opacity and make it 60% transparent, let's see. Okay, uh, it's a little dark though. Maybe I can add another hill shade layer, this time the normal kind of lighter hill shade and do some blend stuff with that. So I'll right click, add data, Again, Living Atlas, and we'll search for Hillshade once more. And here's World Hillshade. I'll add this. Kind of more what we're used to seeing. It's that light version. So we'll use the Overlay Blend Mode. And what this does is boosts the contrast of light and dark of the underlying layers based on these light hill shades. But at this point, I feel like it's a little bit too high contrasty, too bright. Its lightness is kind of blowing out a little bit. Like the hill shade dark, what would happen if I hit the control key and drag this up to make a copy? And I really like how it looks. It kind of looks like it's sculpted out of Play-Doh. Let's take a step back and look at what we've got. We're working with uh, what's currently a web mercator projection. We don't need a web mercator projection for this. In fact, we shouldn't have a web mercator projection for this. A big part of the look of this map is its uh, circular gradient ocean around our area of interest. How do we achieve something like that directly in ArcGIS Pro? Can we do that? I'm gonna change this map from a coordinate system of web mercator to the world from space. Here's what it looks like. It's an orthographic perspective. It just kind of looks like you're an astronaut hovering in space looking at the world. Its center happens to be off the eastern seaboard of the United States in the Atlantic Ocean, but we can change that to whatever we want. So I'm gonna change that to the middle of Indonesia. I'll open the coordinate systems again and right click my current projection and say copy and modify. 
This opens up a dialog where I can make all sorts of changes to the parameters of this projection, which is great. So the longitude of center is going to be 120, I think it is, 120 if I remember. And then latitude, it's just slightly south of the equator. I think it's negative three degrees. So it's three degrees south. We'll say, okay, okay. And there we are. It's centered over our area of interest. And because my ocean polygon is also centered in this view and it's one single polygon, I can apply a radial gradient fill to this and it's gonna look like a cool vignette. Next up is to create a new layout. And I want this to be uh, about the size of a screen, the same aspect ratio of a typical monitor. So I'm gonna choose new layout, custom page size, I'll make it points. So width of 1920, height by 1080. Okay. And in this empty layout, I'm going to insert a map frame right here with a big wide margin and neat line. I'm just kidding. I'm going to go all the way to the edge. Can't stand neat lines. And I can reposition this map view within my layout by right clicking and activating it. And now I can zoom in to just the extent of my area of interest. And I can exit out of that uh, map nudging mode. Now right now I've got a black outline. I can get rid of this as well. Right click the map frame. And instead of activating, I could activate it from over here too. I'll open the properties. There's this little paintbrush icon for the display. By default, we have a one pixel or one point border. I'll get rid of that. Crush it into an infinite singularity and oblivion. Now there's no more black neat line. What about this uh, service layer credit statement down here at the bottom, which is this long statement about hill shade layers and imagery layers that I'm using. And I'm stuck with it because I can't select it. There's nothing to select. Where am I? Check this out. In the Insert tab, Graphics and Text, if I expand the Dynamic Text option, Heather Smith showed me this trick. Scroll down almost to the bottom, there's something called Service Layer Credits. What? If I choose this, then I can put this on my map as an editable thing. For now, I'm going to drag this off view so you won't see it. And we can credit these services uh, manually with our own little text box later on. Time to apply a gradient to our ocean fill. I'll open the symbology panel and I'll just turn this off for now. And instead of a solid fill, I'll choose a gradient fill. And the pattern for this fill, instead of buffered, will be circular. Instead of discrete, which is little bands, boom, 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 of a defined interval, I can just make it continuous, which makes it nice and smooth. Let's see what we've got. Now it doesn't look like much is happening. You can see a little subtle difference. It's very light here and then some uh, light blue at the perimeter. What's going on? Why is that? That's because the extent of this layer is actually rendering far outside of my layout at the edge of the horizon of the earth. So what I can do is just fine tune this size. Instead of 75% size, I'll make it 30% and watch this preview. See how it, boom, pulls it right in. Watch this. Snugs in that gradient just to where we want to see it. Now let's play with these colors. Instead of this pale default blue, let's give it a deep dark blue, steel blue. I'll open the color properties, switch this to my favorite color mode, which is hue, saturation, and value. And I'll just drag this value way down here. It'll look practically black, like a deep navy blue. And instead of uh, having a white circle at the middle, I'll open the color properties here and just give it eh, a slight little blue-ish green. Let's see what this looks like. Oh goodness, that is dramatic. Let me get this out of the way for you. Look at this. It's beautiful. You've got this kind of pseudo-false specular reflection like you're actually looking down at the earth with the surface of the spherical water layer, the precariously thin layer of water blanketing portions of our planet. What if we give these coastal areas a little bit of a, a little beveled effect. A little beveled effect. How do you do a beveled effect in Pro? I'll open up my symbology panel. Now here in the structure, I have this fill and I have this outline which I'm currently not using. 
I'm going to add another fill layer. Fill layer, I'm gonna drag it to the bottom. Now, if you didn't know that you can add over and over again any number of fills, marker, and stroke layers to a single layer in Pro, it rules. It frees you so much. So here's this kind of default gray fill. I'm gonna add an effect called move. And what this does is just nudges it in any direction, X, Y setting. I'll come back to the layers. With this one selected, I'll look at my move effect. And I want this to look kind of sandy, like a little sandy beach. So I'm gonna choose a color. I'll pick um, topaz sand. And I'm gonna give it a slight transparency just so it's not quite so shouty at me, okay? And if you zoom in here, you can see that it's rendering right there. Let me just say, you go down a couple pixels, let's see. Okay, so I've got this guy rendering here, let's hit apply. Yes, very cool, just a little chiseled in body of sand along the coasts on the northwestern side of these features. Let's do the same thing, but give it a darker blue version for the other side. I'll come to the structure, duplicate my little underlying and moved sand feature, and I'll go back to the layers. This one I'll make deep blue, also semi-transparent. And I'll just reverse the direction of these. So this will be negative one and this will be positive one. So if we look at our simple preview, see it's rendering on this side now. And that just drops in a nice little band of coastal shade on the southeast side of these islands. Now really we're not doing anything to the land because all we've got right now is a water polygon, which is fun. You know, it looks like we've got a land coastal feature for the land, but it's all just tricks. Now what about this stroke on the outline? Let's make this white and we'll make it semi-transparent. Actually, let's make it very semi-transparent, like 80% transparent, so only 20% opaque. And there's this thing called the offset effect. This will nudge it in or out of the polygon based on if this is negative or positive. I wanna make this negative, one, two, three points in. See how this is kind of nudging it inward? And instead of fast, which is kind of an efficient rendering option, we'll go accurate. So there are no little weird crimps and overlaps here. And we'll see what we've got. And it gives you this subtle little water ripple, a coastal waterline effect. I'll zoom in for you, get a closer look. See, now let's add a few more of these things back in the structure. I'll duplicate this one, I'll come back to the layers, and this one I'll give even more of an offset. And I'm gonna start doing a dash effect at this point. So dash effect, by default it's a line, there is no dash, but if I choose one of these options, you can see this dash template. This is on off, so the pen is down and the pen is lifted up this distance for each of these. Isn't that kind of interesting? So um, on and off, and I'll give it kind of a lot of on and then occasionally a short bit of off, like a little broken line. So I'll say like 44, two, 33, six, uh, 37, four. You can see that little preview here. We've got a mostly unbroken line with the occasional little blip. And it worked. So let's do it again. Duplicate this one. Give it a more of a distance. And now this stroke dash array, I'll make it about even with itself. So 22, 33, uh, 26, 12, 40, 1, 33. And I'll just do one more duplication. This stroke dash array, I'll, I'll do kind of the inverse. I'll have mostly pen off and then occasional pen on. So um, on is two off is 33, four, uh, 54, um, five, 25. And then I'll, I forgot to increase its offset. Okay. 
It kind of looks like the little rippling pond, like you threw a pebble into some water and goes boom, 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 and it dissipates at a distance. Could I have made each one of these th slightly thinner or more transparent as you radiate away from land? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go back to our extent. So our gradient gives us that sense of specular reflection and a relatively dramatic vignette effect for our layout and draws our eye to the center. It's just kind of cool looking. The waterline effect has a charming notion to it that lets us know, yes, these are areas and it can help draw our eyes to very small islands that we wouldn't have noticed otherwise. Man, but it looks a little bit too crisp and smooth. We should dial it up to 11 and give it a little bit of a texture in the water. It's too smooth. I want to add this ocean layer one more time. And I've got this photo that I took with my phone of poster paper. Pretty basic, it's just a little bit of a texture of paper. On, off, light and shadow. Something to make this all look a little bit more tactile. Let's see what this looks like as a picture fill. I'll open the symbology. I can get rid of the stroke. And for the fill, I'll choose picture fill. Quality will be set to picture. I'll make it, uh, uh, I'll start with 256 in size. And I'll browse to the file. Post to print JPEG, okay. I zoom in, I can see I've got the texture there. I'll hit apply. Now this is just covering up all the work that we just did. What's the big deal? Why would I do this? I'm gonna use a blend mode to kind of cook that texture into my water. And I'll choose color burn. And now the texture of this paper is kind of cooked into the tones of this gradient. I'll zoom in so you can get a closer look. And that looks good, kind of papery, but it could look stronger. What do you do? I'm just going to duplicate this. Copy. Paste. There we go. Look at all that texture. I love it. Close this. See what we've got really liking it well when you're ready jump on over to part two and i'll meet you there we're going to use a lot of the same tricks here and we're going to apply them to an overview globe that has this kind of modern minimalist perspective that fades off to nothing at the edges like a glassy little overview globe i'll see you there